السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures and the development of the gastrointestinal tract I'm gonna cover today the development of the hind gut I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt Let me remind you of the hind gut derivatives in the adult. It is the left third of the transverse colon with the left colic flexure, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the upper part of the anal canal. Also, the hind gut gives the epithelial lining of the urinary bladder and most of the urethra as they are derived from the cloaca. If we look at this sagittal section of this embryo, we're gonna notice that the hind gut is attached posteriorly to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesentery. Here, the dorsal aorta gives its single branches, and at this level, there is the inferior mesenteric artery which will supply the hind gut. We also can see that the hind gut ends blindly in a pouch called the cloaca. If we like to remember how the cloaca develops, this section of the gestational sac, you can see the neural tube, and this is the amniotic cavity, and this is the yolk sac cavity. This is the cranial end of the embryo, and this is the caudal end of the embryo where it is attached by its caudal end to the placenta by the connecting stalk. So the cloaca develops by the appearance of a diverticulum called the allantois, which is a small projection from the caudal end of the yolk sac. This diverticulum will project into the connecting stalk. Cranial to the allantois lies a membrane called the cloacal membrane which is formed of adherence of two layers, the ectoderm and the endoderm. As a result of folding of the embryo in a craniocaudal direction and the formation of the tail fold, both the allantois and the connecting stalk will move ventrally. Thus, the cloaca will form, and the hind gut, which is derived from the yolk sac, will terminate at the cloaca. In this view, we can see the hind gut, the cloaca, the allantois, and on each side from the intermediate mesoderm, the kidneys by its different stages will develop. At the cervical region, there is the pronephrus. At the thoracolumbar region, there is the mesonephric kidney. And at the sacral region, the metanephric kidney will develop. If we enlarge it. We can see the two mesonephric ducts, which terminate also at the sides of the cloaca. Thus, the cloaca acts as a common end for the termination of the gastrointestinal tract or the hind gut. And also the termination of the urinary system as the mesonephric duct terminates into the sides of the cloaca. Now how the cloaca divides? By the sixth or the seventh week of development, a septum, which is made of mesoderm, it is called the urorectal septum, appears between the hind gut and the allantois. This septum grows towards the cloacal membrane and finally fuses with it, thus dividing the cloaca into anorectal part posteriorly and urogenital sinus anteriorly. Also, 
the cloacal membrane divides into anal membrane dorsally and urogenital membrane ventrally. The tip of the urorectal septum between uh, these two membranes will give rise to the perineal body. If you want to revise the development of the urogenital sinus, please refer to the videos of the development of the urinary bladder. Now for the development of the anal canal. In order to see how the anorectal canal develops, let's enlarge this area. First, there is proliferation of the ectoderm and the mesenchyme around uh, the anal membrane. It forms what is called proctodium. It appears at the end of the eighth week of development, and during the ninth week of development, it recanalizes again, and there is rupture of the anal membrane. Thus, the anal canal now is formed of two parts. The upper part of the anal canal is endodermal in origin and supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery, while the lower part now is ectodermal in origin and it is supplied by the inferior rectal artery. The junction between these two is identified by the presence of the pectinate line. For the anomalies of the hindgut, we have what's called congenital aganglionic megacolon. This anomaly develops because of the lack of migration of the neural crest cell causing failure of prestalytic movement in the distal segment of the colon. So the ganglionic segment will be narrow because of the lack of the prestalysis and proximal to this narrowing there will be distension of the colon. Other anomalies is anal stenosis in which there is dorsal deviation of formation of the urorectal septum backwards leading to narrowing of the anal canal. Or there is a kind of anomaly called atresia of the anus because of failure of the anal membrane to rupture. So we can see that the upper part of the anal canal terminates blindly while the lower part of the anal canal did not develop. As we can see here. Also, there is the anorectal genesis, in which if the rectum ends superior to the level of the levator ani muscle, there is a fistula between the rectum and the vagina, or between the uh, rectum and the urethra, or the rectum and the urinary bladder. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you like it. If you do, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share.